<laughs> you just phone. It's not in your interest. We love that at Blistex, by the way. You ever notice you get addicted to your Blistex? Same idea. When you use lotion, you shut down your skin's natural, natural moisturizing properties. Same on your lips. That's why you get addicted to your lotion and your chapstick. That's why. Have you noticed that your dry skin hasn't gone away no matter how much lotion you put on? You shut down your body's inherent mechanisms, and that's what's wrong with healthcare. That's the meme we have. We shut down systems in the body instead of turning them on. So, that's a long introduction. But now that you've heard about me, I'm ready to talk about the eight chapters of good nutrition. The eight chapters of good nutrition, protein, fats, carbohydrates, fiber, water, vitamins, <coughs> minerals, trace nutrients, or accessory nutrients. All right, chapter one, protein. And by the way, this is nowhere near comprehensive because we don't have a lot of time. But I'm going to try and hit on the highlights here. As best as I can, I'm going to try and focus on the skin. Put this right here. Terrible time. All right, protein comes from the Greek word. Proteus means of primary importance. Protein is the gears that run the machinery of the body. If your body is a machine, the wheels are protein. The gears are protein. Everything that turns is protein. If you don't have protein, the gears are not going to work correctly. As far as the skin goes, like the rest of the body, 80% of the skin is protein. I can take the water out, 80% is protein. So ladies, no matter how much wrinkle cream you put on, if you don't have protein in your diet, correct protein in your diet, you're going to have wrinkles. Because the tissue that holds your skin intact is protein. Now it's more than that, we'll talk about that in a moment, but first and foremost, you've got to have the correct protein, and nobody does. Nobody does, because what do we do to our protein typically before we eat it? Cook it. Cook it. You cook it, you start to denature it. You start to lose its value as you cook it. To the degree you cook it, that's the degree you lose its value. So the ideal way to do your protein is not cooked, which means powdered protein. Powdered <laughs> protein. Why everybody's not doing powdered protein, I have no idea. It's how you want to do your protein. Now, you can have your steak and your hamburger and whatever it is you want, but first and foremost, make sure you get your protein needs met in a cold processed powder. The way protein value is measured is by something called BV, which stands for biological value. And biological value is a measurement of how much, pro how much of the protein that you ate is used. It goes on a scale of 0 to 100. 100 means 100% 100 of the protein you ate is going to be used. Make sense? Okay? So the BV scale is 0 to 100. What do you suppose a 100 on the 0 to 100 scale is, on the BV scale? Eggs. Yes? Eggs. Egg protein. All right? One of, the most, one of the most harmful, silliest memes in all of healthcare and nutrition is this idea about eggs being bad for you. Okay? And I don't, if anybody ever tells you that cholesterol, what's your cholesterol, 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 send them packing. That's nonsense to anybody who understands biochemistry. And by the way, the best... Uh, the best healers, if you will, physiologists, I hate that word, but the best people who can help you with your body are biochemists, not doctors. Biochemists who understand the biochemical pathways, how A gets turned to B gets turned into C. That's the key to health on a physiological level, is how the body's making things, and that's biochemistry. Find a biochemist. That's who you want to go to. To understand any biochemist, by the way, in this room? To study biochemistry? Okay? Biochemistry is what you want to understand, how things get turned into each other. So... When it comes to protein value, egg is the gold standard. Zero to 100, uh, gets 100. Okay? Soy, down a little bit further, 75. Milk, dairy, by the way, dairy is a big problem. Milk, you should all, I'm sure you guys all know that. I'm preaching to the choir, hopefully. Cow's milk, big, big problem. I don't care if it's raw or otherwise. So, but there are fractions in the cow's milk that can be very powerful. Uh, milk is a very complex substance. It's technically an emulsion, which means it's oil and water mixed together with a lot of stuff inside. It's got a lot of pieces in it. So not all the pieces are problematic. In fact, some of the pieces in milk are extremely powerful, and they're wonderful protein. In fact, one of the major complexes that's in milk is called whey. Exactly. And typically when you're making cheese, you extract this whey portion, because milk, one of the, the two biggest portions of milk are a liquidy portion and a gummy portion. And if you put enzymes in the milk, the enzymes will react and the liquidy portion will go to one side and the gummy portion will go to another side. And they used to use that gummy portion. They still use that gummy portion. But in the old days, they loved that gummy portion because it was very portable protein. 
problem is that gummy portion is very hard for the body to process. Technically, it's called casein, C-A-S-E-I-N. You may have seen that, uh, that name on an ingredient guide. Casein causes many of the problems with milk. There's other, there's other parts to the milk that are problematic, and those tend to go out in the gummy portion. The liquidy portion used to get thrown out. Back in the old days, they actually used to, used to use it. The, the gummy portion is called curd, and the liquidy portion is called whey. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, eating her curds and whey. That's where we get that from. They used to do that in the old days. They used to do it in the homes. The homes were, they called them cottages. That's where you get the name cottage cheese. That's what cottage cheese is. So in any case, they used to throw, they, they, in the old days, they would do, eat the whey. They were smart. But then around, when, when science became all in vogue around the Industrial Revolution in the, in the 19th century, they started to change how they ate, and they thought the whey was, until somebody around 1950 or 1960, some scientists got there, yeah, let's see what's going on in the whey. They would give it to the animals. The animals loved it. The animals thrived on it. So they would see what was in there, and they found this amazing stuff. This protein that was not only nature's most incredible source of protein in terms of building things, but it also had anti-cancer ingredients in it. It had ingredients that supported your digestive system. It had ingredients that helped detoxify your body. It helped in had ingredients that built up your immune system. And it was all in this stuff that they were throwing out. And so they started to give it to athletes because it had a protein spectrum, a protein uh, design that was specific for building. Think about it, that's what it was for, it's for building an animal. So they would give it to athletes and athletes went crazy. They went crazy, and I don't know if some of you remember this, but back in the 70s and 80s, all the athletes were doing whey protein. That's when I started to get the idea. Gosh, if athletes are doing this stuff, you know, we're all athletes. Just getting your butt out of bed in the morning is an athletic event, all right? We we're all pretty much, right? So, I mean, if they're doing it, we want to do it too. And so I was like, let's start working with this stuff. And sure enough, I started giving it to people in my pharmacy. I started taking myself because I was always involved in athletics. The results are mind-blowing, and to this day, it is the most powerful, most effective protein known, with the exception of human mother's milk. So if you can't get any human mother's milk, that's the protein you want to be going for. Hey there. Yeah, did I see you last night? Was that last night? That was last night I saw you, right? You. You. Yes, you. Oh, no, in the purple. Oh, me? Yeah, you. That's your name, though. How many of you were here last night, or did you talk last night? All right, so, try to laugh at the jokes. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so, uh, or I die. All right, so whey protein. It's so good, it's off the charts. It's 104. That means you get more protein value than you put in. How cool is that? If you're not on whey protein, folks, oh my God, you are crazy.